Hey, welcome back. We are starting now in the book of 1 Samuel. So we're going back now to about that 11, 1100 BC to 1000 BC. We're right in that range. We're going to be in just the years. What we had to remember was uh, they came out of bondage in Egypt. Then there was a period of the judges, a period of great chaos and mayhem. Then we get into a conclusion where we shift from judges into the kings. And so here we're going to look at a lot of the time of Samuel and David. So and sometimes we'll read the whole section of verses, sometimes we'll summarize. This is the story of Hannah and the birth of Samuel, and it's going to be very pertinent to the rest of the things that happen. Let's read it. Now there was a certain man of Ramathaim Zophim of the mountains of Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, an Ephraimite. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. This man went up from his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh. Also, the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he would give a double portion, for he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable, because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. So here's the setting. Uh, Elkanah has two wives. Hannah was presumably the first. She was barren. She's not giving birth to any children. That was a humongous giant deal in those days. So Elkanah marries Penina. Of course, we know the Bible wouldn't really support its reporting what happened. It doesn't support multiple marriages. We really would marry one partner for life. But he's got two wives, and then what we have is the one has lots of children. It says here sons and daughters, so there's at least four, and I'm sure there's more than that. Hannah doesn't have any children, though. Let me reiterate verses 4 and 5. Whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters, but to Hannah he would give a double portion, for he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. So it's interesting here, there's nothing anywhere here we would read about Elkanah loving Penina. Penina gives him all these sons and daughters, but there's nothing, doesn't say that he doesn't love her, but it's not there. But the one about Hannah is there. He loves Hannah, but Hannah is just desperate and totally sad because she can't bear a child. There's many different kinds of writing within the scriptures, and we have to interpret them wisely looking at the kind of writing. Apocalyptic prophecy has a lot of symbolism. So in narrative, we're getting the true story. It's truly recorded. And what's going on here, though, is we're going to read through. We want to watch for signals about what's going to happen. And one of the signals we saw was that you watch for repetition and things like that. And what do we see here in repetition? It said that the Lord had closed Hannah's womb. So that was in there twice, and that's because that's, that's going to change here because of Hannah's faithful response to God. But here, she is sad. She's being provoked by her, her associate wife. I don't know what you call two wives, but the other one. And there's a lot of sadness. But now here's our starting point. Hannah wants to have children. She can't have children for whatever reason. There's a problem. This sets up the, the whole chapter here that we're looking at these next couple of mornings. So the text calls it that the Lord closed her womb, but this could be God just taking charge of something, taking responsibility for something that was just because there's sin in the world. And humans created the sin problem in the world. There we are in the middle of it. So there's a lot of things that are all wrong here. Shouldn't be two wives. Shouldn't have any trouble bearing children, but that's because we're in a damaged world. Anyway, let's look and see what happens tomorrow morning. We're just kind of setting up the deal now. They go up once a year to the big meeting. What's going to happen when they go up? Tomorrow we'll find out. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, there's a lot of things that aren't quite the way they're supposed to be in our world. There are sin problems. There are problems with fertility. There are problems in relationships. Here we have a, a very weird relationship, two wives, one husband. Lord, in spite of all this, your grace is sufficient. You will work, I believe, for Elkanah and Samuel and, and their group, Lord. Bless, we pray, and show us the way in our day, too. There's a lot of things that aren't right in our day. May we look to you as our solver and recreator. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. So God be with you today and me too.